The four measures that we're going to learn can be divided into four quadrants. Based on total risk or systematic risk only, and based on risk-free rate adjustment or market risk adjustment. These are best illustrated with the capital market line and security market line. The Sharpe ratio is a risk-free rate adjusted measure based on total risk. It's defined as the excess returns per unit of total portfolio risk, calculated simply as the portfolio return minus the risk-free rate divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. We can illustrate the Sharpe ratio of a portfolio as the slope of its capital allocation line and can be compared to the slope of the CML, which is the Sharpe ratio for any portfolio along the CML. If the slope of the CAL is steeper than the CML, it means that the portfolio outperforms the market on a risk-adjusted basis. The other measure that's based on total risk is the M-squared measure. In this case, the measure is adjusted against the market portfolio. For example, this portfolio has a lower return than the market returns, but if we project the return based on its Sharpe ratio, the portfolio is actually outperforming the market. The M square is actually this portion over here, the excess return over the market on a risk-adjusted basis. The excess return of the portfolio is the slope of the line, which is the Sharpe ratio times the market standard deviation. The M squared is calculated by subtracting the return of the market portfolio above the risk-free rate. Let's hop over to measures based on systematic risk or beta. The Trainor measure is the equivalent of the Sharpe ratio based on systematic risk, so the returns are measured as per unit systemic risk in this case. We simply replace the portfolio standard deviation with portfolio beta. Likewise, the Trainor measure is the slope of this line. And the Jensen's Alpha is based on systematic risk, but market adjusted. The difference with the M squared in this case is that instead of measuring the excess return based on the market risk, the Jensen's Alpha is a measure of excess return based on the portfolio beta. Based on the security market line, the portfolio's expected return is supposed to be here. We can calculate this using the cap M. If the portfolio's actual return is here, the Jensen's alpha is therefore this portion here, the portfolio's actual return minus its expected return. Now that we've learnt the four measures of portfolio performance from each of these four quadrants, let's learn how to apply each of them. A US broad market mutual fund with zero fees benchmarks its return against the S&P 500 index. Given these statistics, calculate the Sharpe ratio, M squared measure, Trainor measure, and Jensen's alpha of the mutual fund. Pause the video now and work out your answers. And we're back. Let's first label the various figures that we need. With this, the four measures are simply calculated by plugging in the figures. We get a Sharpe ratio of 0.24. This means that we get 0.24% of excess return for every 1% exposure to total risk. The M squared measure is minus 0.17. As this is negative, the portfolio actually underperformed the market on a risk adjusted basis. The Trainor measure is 4.64. This means that we get 4.64% excess return for every one unit of beta which represents systematic risk. And lastly, the Jensen's alpha is 0.2%. This means that the portfolio performed 0.2% above what is expected. It's interesting to note that based on its systematic risk only, the portfolio outperformed, while based on total risk, the portfolio underperformed the market. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At 
Prep Nuggets. Let us do the hard work for you.